It's the funny part. It's like they don't... You move, but not a whole lot of room for me. It's like, yeah, I know. There's a reason for it. <laughs> Too much freedom is not a good thing for you. And in those moments where he gets ahead of you, let him stay there with that pressure on that leash okay. and don't move up to him. Okay. Wait for him to take a sit back because when he does sit, he has to sit back a little bit. That's when that loop will be in that leash is what, what uh, blah, 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 which is what we are looking for. Yep, and now you just wait for him to do what he wants to do. And if he if he is leaning on you when you're waiting for this, take a little step to the side so he can't touch you. Shits and giggles, tap his butt, see what happens. And in this situation, since he is so much far ahead of you, when you do take another step forward, you're you're gonna wanna take up as much slack as you can, only about six inches from the back of your hand to where the leash is, because you're gonna end up coming right to next to where he is anyway. You're gonna let him hold that sit again, and then that's when you're gonna take another step. Yeah, so when he does sit, you're going to uh, pull yourself up to him okay. so that that tension is still there okay. because if he feels it loose, he might want to take another step again. Right. So the point of that is to make sure that the tension is still there and he knows we don't move when there's tension. Right. Which is why you've been standing there for two minutes. <laughs> right. well, this is why dog training isn't sexy and like... It's because there's a lot of this. <laughs> and then when he does come back to you too like that when he's walking around, feel free to take up slack. Okay. Yep, just like that. So now you won't have to pull, you won't have to keep the tension and pull yourself closer because he already came closer to you. So now because of that, you removed the freedom, you removed that extra eight inches of freedom that he had now he's forced to sit there so and i think this would have been your fifth one where you were supposed to reward but remember he's now doing this for two minutes and you ain't getting a reward for this you know your reward is the minimum which is getting to take another step forward so
And usually at this point in time, owners would be like, oh, well, can I ask him to sit? Yeah, you can ask him, but that's not the point of this exercise. That's not the point of any of our training. You can ask your dog to do anything you want it to. Does it mean it's going to? No, I'm not entirely sure. If you've worked with them in these scenarios and you ask them to do it, there's a good chance they will. If they're in training doing this for the first time, you know, this isn't his first time, but this is his first time learning this stuff, it's going to take like this. So, yeah, and that's why I say if you're going to use their weight and reward method for things, make sure you have the time. It could take a minute for your dog to finally figure out what you want from them, which is okay, because then you're supposed to reward it, you know. And you can even take up more slack now. Yep, so now he's back at that original, you know, foot off your hand. And then you see how adjusting that to where it's sitting in the right place? Yep, so I would do my best to keep him at that leash, that distance right there. Um, and because you're a little bit shorter than me, um, and by a little bit, I mean a lot of it. Um, keep your hand at like, keep your elbow at like a 90 with him. Okay. Because, it, right about there, because that will keep the tension, that'll keep it upright so okay. it doesn't slide, slide back. Down. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 cool. that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. 